Good morning, viewers. Welcome to the session devotionals for this morning. We'll be looking at the topic, walking and digging around your dreams. Walking and digging around your dreams under the series, The Reality of Great Exploit, host my humble self, Luke K. Our text is taken from the book of Luke chapter 13, from verse 7 down to 9. But let's pray before we begin. Father, thank you for the bread in our nostrils. Thank you for the strength you've given us. Thank you for good health, for your mercy, for all you've done for us. We receive all the praise, honor, and adoration in Jesus' name. Your word said, Pray for it. It said, The part of the judge that shining light, that shining more and more to the perfect day. We'll come to receive the light of your word so that our days will shine ahead. Father, we ask so God grant us understanding. Isaiah 9 8 send the word of Jacob and light of the entire Israel. Thank you, Jesus, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Topic one more time walking. Walking and digging around your dreams. Walking and digging around your dreams. Under the series, The Reality of Great Exploit, host my humble self, Dr. K. Text, taking the book of Luke chapter 13, from verse 7 down to 9. I read from verse 7. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and found none, cut it down. Why cumber it to the ground? And in verse 8. And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig around it, till I shall what? dig around it and dunk it. And in verse 9, and if it bear fruit well, and if it does not, then we'll cut it down. May the Lord bless his word and grant us understanding in Jesus' name for that reading. Genesis chapter 2, from verse 1 to 3, say, Thus the heavens and the earth are finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And in verse 3, and God said, The seventh day and sanctified because that is, he has rested from all his work which God created and made. So we are all product of our Father, a great worker, talking about God himself. And of course, Jesus too was a hard worker. He said, My Father walketh, he that's why I walketh. And of course, you and I must walk. Second Chronicles chapter 26, from verse 6 to 15. 16 years old, Odusiah, when he began to reign, and he reigned 15 and 2 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jecoliab of Jerusalem. And in verse 4, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. I mean, what did he do? He loved the Lord, he served the Lord, and he walked with the Lord. And in verse 6, and he went forth and warred against the Philistines and break down the wall of God and the wall of Jana and the wall of Ashdod and build cities about Asia and among the Philistines. And in verse 7, and God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians that dwell in Guba and the Mahonims. And in verse 10, also he built two walls in the desert, that is, walk. And dig many wells, for he had much cattle, both in low country and in plains, husbandmen also, and vine dressers in the mountains, and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. And in verse 15, and he made in Jerusalem engines invented by condiment to be on the towers and upon the book walls, to shoot arrows and great stones without. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. He is a die hard worker. Talking about Uzziah. Proverbs 22, verse 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, and he shall not stand before me, men. I see you being placed among kings in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9 to 10 said, For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meant to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church. Paul speaking there said in verse 10, For by grace of God I am what I am, and by his grace, which was bestowed upon me. Me was not in vain, but I labor. That means I walked, I digged around my vision, of course. I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I pray that baptism of work will be our portion this morning in Jesus' name. Topic one more time working, walking and digging around your dreams. Walking and digging around your dreams. Under the series, The Reality of Great Exploit, host my humble self, look at text, taking the book of Luke 13 7. Down to now, for the reading Genesis 2, 1 or 3, 2 Corinthians 26, 3 to 15, Proverbs 22, verse 29, 1 Corinthians 15, 9 to 10. Please, at your free time, you can read all of these Bible passages again, and I'm sure God will speak to you through them, and certainly you're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Thinking cap, a mind blowing word for this morning is every hybrid seed not planted, watered, weeded, and digged around will never deliver hybrid fruit. I'll take that again. Every hybrid seed not planted, watered, weed, and digged around will never deliver hybrid fruit. Think about it. Today we'll look at the topic, walking and digging around your dreams. On that teaching series on the reality of great exploit, 
But by way of introduction, let's understand that what you don't dig around will never deliver. Just like planting a hybrid seed without weeding, watering, and fertilizing, definitely that seed will die. Meaning the quality of a seed notwithstanding is the input of work that determines its fruit and the end value. Similarly, with our vision, the quality of your vision, the quality of your dreams, the quality of your aspiration, the quality of your certificate notwithstanding, without work to match it, definitely those certificates, those dreams will be fruitless. It's quite beautiful that God has programmed great exploit dreams in us, but with our diligent work, we can't see any great future anywhere. And on this note, we'll be learning about the subject of working and digging around our dreams. And I pray at the end of this 10 minute slide, God will grant you understanding of the subject and baptize you with the Spirit to work diligently in your vision and your dreams so that they will come to reality in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 26, from 1 to 32, we see. Isaac, God told him, this is my plan for you. He said there was famine in the days of Isaac. And in verse 2, and the Lord appeared to him and said, go not down into Egypt. He said, dwell in the land which I shall I will tell you of. And of course, God told him to stay in the land of Gerar. And he was there. And in verse 12, then Isaac sold. He wasn't just there folding his hands because God told him not to go to Egypt and just dwell in Gerar. But he was what? He was a farmer. This man was investing his time, his energy, and resources in farming. And Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man was created in verse 13 and went forward and grew until he became very great. So if one is a great expert, then you must work with your hands. Don't be complacent. Don't hide under the uh, saying that there is no work and all that. Create one if you can't find one. Verse 14 said, for he had possession of flocks. And position of herd and great store of servant and Philistines envied him. Verse 15 For all the wells which his father, you know, dig in the days of Abraham, the Philistines had stopped them. They feed them with earth. And of course, the man went, digged another one. They covered it also. That's in the valley of Gerar. Of course, he digged another well again. They closed it. <laughs> he digged another one. They closed it. Then he moved away from that place. He changed location. Look at it. And in verse 22 And he removed from tents and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And of course, in verse 23, and he went up from thence to Bathsheba. And in verse 26, then Abimelech went to meet him at Gerar, and of course the host of the army, to tell him, Let's have a trinity, let's sign MOU that you're not going to fight us, you're not going to destroy us, because he has become very great, all oh, via works. Said him was started and came to pass the same day that Isaac's servant came and told him concerning the well which they had digged and said, We have found water. I pray as you dig around your vision, as you walk towards your vision, God will bring your desire to lamplight in Jesus. In Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 49. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, referring to Jesus, as their custom was, they went for the feast. And they had fulfilled the days as they returned the child tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph, his mother, and Joseph and his mother knew not, verse 44. But they, supposing that he is in their company, but he wasn't there. They sought him, they couldn't find him. And in verse 45, and they, when they found him in the temple back in Jerusalem, he came to pass. In verse 46, after three days, three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. He wasn't on the club for these three days. He did not run to the place they go to watch football or any place. He was busy with God, learning and asking questions. And in verse 47, and all that had him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when his mother saw him, he said, What have you done this to us? So we were looking for him. And verse 14, and look at the reply that Jesus gave her. He said, And he said unto them, How is it that thou seest me? Would ye know that I must be about my father's business? No wonder he said, I've come to set fire on the earth. How can I? It's already kindled. He said, my father, he had to work. And also, I must work. He said, the hour, of course, every man must work because the hour will come that no man will be able to work. Matthew chapter 13 from verse 54 to 56. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in the synagogue. And so much they were astonished. And they were asking, where has this man, this wisdom, and these are mighty works? I pray this month and beyond. You have mighty works to show in Jesus' name. At the end of this year, you look back and said, all oh, this feat accomplished 
through your hands by God's help. That will be your portion in Jesus. Matthew 5, from verse 13 to 16, said, We are the salt of the earth, we are the light of the world. Therefore, we should shine and we should add taste to the world. But you can't do that without work. Please, I charge you. I've come to charge you this morning. Get busy doing something. God grant you understanding in Jesus' name. We've been trying to look at this subtopic. What's the reality of great export? And we've seen three points so far. We saw the first point that the reality of great exploit begins with believing in the testimonies and the act of great exploit of past that God have done. We saw that great exploit is also real when we walk on and believe in our great exploit dreams. So whatever dream we have, whatever dream we've caught, we should believe it and also walk around it. And we saw another point yesterday. That of course, great export is real. When we meditate and plan dreams, it will come to reality. When we meditate and plan our dreams, then definitely it will come to reality. Today, to take us further, remember the subtopic: What's the reality of great export? What's the reality of great export all about? Is it real? The answer is yes. How is it real? When we walk and dig around our dreams, walking and digging around your dreams. This is an act of running in work value, vehemently, discreetly, and diligently with one's vision towards his accomplishment. I take that again. We're looking at what's the reality of great expert. That is, is great expert real? The answer is yes. How is it possible when we walk and dig around our dreams? We went further to say it is an act of running in work value, vehemently, not lazily, vehemently, discreetly, and diligently with one's vision towards his accomplishment. I see your vision being accomplished in Jesus. Now remember in Genesis chapter 2, 1 and 3, God himself, Genesis chapter 1, from 1 to 31, he was walking. He created the heavens and the earth. And of course, he saw that everything he has walked on, behold, it was beautiful. And in chapter 2, 1 or 3, we saw God rested after he has finished. He said, in verse 1, said, thus the heavens and the earth was finished. And all the host of them, and in verse 2, and the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So if God, our Father, walked and is still walking, and Jesus came to this earth and walked till the last hour that he left, then you and I have no excuse to be lazy about. If you are complaining there is no job, please create one. There are so many businesses you can start with as little as 10,000. And you'll be using a phone of 100K, and you claim you don't have a job. Perhaps you are not serious. I will grant you understanding this morning in Jesus. In 2 Chronicles 26, from verse 3 to 15, we see a 16 year old Uzziah began to reign, began to walk, began to walk, began to walk, and God was helping him before he became very great. In verse 15, said, talking about Uzziah, he made in Jerusalem engines, engines. So the word engine did not just come out, out of technology of just today. Now it's been from the beginning. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bookworks to shoot arrows and great stones with her and his name spread far about talking about the little boy who was there was marvelously helped child network breakdown jesus okay we'll stop here good morning ma